In this video, I'm going to show you how to program a CalRoute test into the Portable Vibration Calibrator. A CalRoute test is a step sign frequency sweep test for an accelerometer with automatic pass-fail notification after each test point. The first step to programming our test, and we'll use a PCB357B04 charge mode accelerometer as our example. The first step is to open the supplied Microsoft Excel macro-enabled workbook. There's no software required other than Microsoft Excel. The next step is to click on the Route Creator tab. And we'll begin filling in the cells in blue so that we can save ourselves some typing later on. So we're going to call this test the 357B04. And I'll show you the sensor in a moment with a frequency unit of in hertz and an amplitude of 1 G peak at most test points. Now here we need to choose the firmware version of our portable vibration calibrator. I'm going to show you the latest version of firmware which is uh, 6.1.0 for the purpose of this video. And so I'm going to choose 6.0 or later. Next, as I hover over route type, you get a, a short explanation you see on the screen there. So there's two different types. There's hard limit and there's ISO. So hard limit's the easier one to explain. That is used for proximity probes and other sensors um, where the sensitivity at reference frequency doesn't matter. Like for a proximity probe, the nominal output is 200 millivolts per mil with a 5% tolerance. So anything from 190 to 210 millivolts per mil passes calibration. And it doesn't matter what the sensitivity is at any specific frequency or amplitude. For a typical piezoelectric accelerometer used in the test and measurement market or the industrial market, the calibration follows the ISO 16063 Part 24 standard, where um, the sensitivity of the transducer is measured at 100 hertz, or whatever the reference frequency is. It could be 159, it could be 80, um, but in our case, it's 100 hertz. So the sensitivity is measured at 100 hertz, and then there's a, a tolerance based on that number. Then the sensitivity is measured at the rest of the frequency sweep points, and the measurement at 100 hertz is considered uh, when you're deciding whether or not the accelerometer passes or fails. So if you get 9.9 .9 picocoulombs per g at 100 hertz, the sensor must remain within 5% of 9.9 .9 at all the other frequency points. So the route type in our case is going to be ISO. Sorry. And then uh, here is where we enter the upper and lower bound uh, for most of our test points. And now we need to go to the um, accelerometer specification sheet to look at that. So this is the 357B04 made by PCB Piezotronics and the output is 10 picocoulombs per G with a 15% tolerance at uh, 100 Hertz, which is the reference frequency. Then the sensor needs to stay within plus or minus 5% of whatever you measure at reference frequency, could be 9.9, .9, could be 10.1, needs to stay within 5% of that value to 9 kilohertz. And then for the ranges above 9 kilohertz to 12 kilohertz, the tolerance is allowed to expand to 10% and then eventually to 3 dB when you look at 18 kilohertz. Now our portable vibration calibrator can only go up to 10 kilohertz, so that's what we'll, what we'll program in this test. So 15% at 100 hertz, 5% to 9K, and 10% to uh, 12 kilohertz with a 10 picocoulomb per G nominal sensitivity. So let's go back to the programming. Most of our upper and lower bounds are going to be that 5% because we're going to run a sweep we're gonna run the sweep all the way to 10 kilohertz. I'll show you in a moment why I'm programming five here, but most of our test points will have a 5% tolerance. So I'm just trying to save myself some typing here by entering these values into the blue cells. It's not the end of the programming by any means. Uh, the nominal sensitivity is 10 picocoulombs per G. 
The sensor is a charge accelerometer and the model number is a 357B04 and that will print on all of my calibration certificates. So now that I've auto filled the cells, you can see that the amplitude has filled in at 1G peak and my upper and lower bound for every test point is 5. Now, if I hover over frequency here, in an ISO route type, you must type in the reference frequency here in row 15. All of the other bounds will be based on the sensitivity that is uh, derived in the first test point of the calibration route or the pre-programmed step sign automated test. So the reference frequency is 100 hertz. And as I mentioned, at 100 hertz, our upper and lower bound is 15%. So I'm just going to change these values at only this point so that um, I get a pass-fail notification based on a nominal sensitivity of 10 picocoulombs per G plus or minus 15% of that value. And again, we'll do that test at 1G peak. The rest of the programming is considerably easy. I'm going to sweep down. So let's do 10,000 hertz down to 10 hertz. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, um, like I mentioned earlier, going back to the spec sheet, uh, the only test point that we're going to test where we have a 10% tolerance is that 10 kilohertz point. That's higher, uh, we, we're plus or minus 5% to 9 kilohertz, plus or minus 10% at the 10 kilohertz test point. So let's go back here and change the upper and lower bound to 10% at 10 kilohertz. The rest of the test points are plus or minus 5% and that is programmed correctly. And I'm done. Now you might be surprised, it seemed complicated at first, but now I'm done. So with this test, once again, what will happen, the very first test point is 100 hertz. We're going to shake at 1G peak and we're going to apply a 15% tolerance to the nominal sensitivity of 10 picocoulombs per G, just like we see here on the, on the specification sheet, 10 picocoulombs per G, 15% tolerance at the reference frequency of 100 hertz. At 10 kilohertz, we're allowed to be plus or minus 10% of what we measure at 100 hertz. And then at all other frequencies from 9 kilohertz all the way down to 10 hertz, the value must remain within 5% of the sensitivity that we measured at 100 hertz, which is the reference frequency. The last step is for me to click create route file, and then it creates a file underscore route.pvc um, with the um, route name at the front. Uh, you must save it as an underscore route.pvc file, and you must save it to the supplied USB drive within the cal records underscore pvc folder and the calibration route folder. And then I can save that file to this folder. I've already saved it once. And then I'm ready to go. I can load that file into the portable vibration calibrator. Thanks for watching.